Today on Grand Touring Concepts, we show you how to build a rudimentary flow bench. Hose. Hose. So the first step is to take ourselves over and get some plumbing supplies to yep. build our flow bench. So we're heading to the local hardware store and we'll see what we can find. We're gonna have to do this, Darren. Oh, look at that. Shit fits. It's like getting in over a roll cage, I think. Yep. I'm helping. You're free now. All right, just just like a roll cage. This is gonna be good. Super safe. It's good drift weather. Very much so. Thousand horsepower. Man, this roll cage really worked. factory install. So the parts required for this project are pretty straightforward. We're using some 3 inch PVC piping, some 2 inch PVC piping, an adapter, elbow, some ties. This is quarter inch diameter clear tubing, quarter inch diameter copper tubing, and various adhesives, screws, and fasteners. As well, we have a Lexan polycarbonate sheet that will be used to make the adapter for the bottom of the cylinder head. These blocks of wood will serve to be our test stand once we get a few additional pieces made and that will hold the cylinder head off our work area. And then we'll be able to take our test chamber and mount that to the bottom of the cylinder head. In order to draw a vacuum from the cylinder head, we need to build an adapter. So we're just gonna take a spark plug, hollow all the ceramic out of it, and epoxy a tube in that we can hook a vacuum port to. First step is to cut the ring that holds the ceramic in. We're just going to use a hacksaw, we'll cut this off, and the ceramic should pretty much fall right out. Next up, we're going to cut the ground strap off the bottom of the plug right here. Then we should be able to take a punch and tap the ceramic out of it. And that gives us a hollow core that we can take this tube, put inside and epoxy it up to give us a port. When finished, your copper tube and spark plug adapter will look like this. You see we've filled everything here with a quick set epoxy and that'll provide a vacuum seal that we can screw into the spark plug hole and use this part as our test port for our vacuum measurements. For the main chamber, we have a three inch piece that we cut. It just goes into our reducer with the adapter on it. And this will have a plate that'll go to the bottom of the cylinder head and our shop vac will hook to here. We have laminated our Lexan into a thick panel for structural strength. Now all we have to do is mark out and drill a hole to mount this in, use some JB Weld or any other adhesive, and we can go on to the next part of the project. After we mark out the hole for this piece to go into, we use the drill bit and perimeter drilled this whole piece because we didn't have a saw, hole saw to do it properly. So we perimeter drilled it. Then we used the air powered die grinder with a carbide burr. And we just went around, trimmed it all out, and then essentially filed the fit until this slides in nice and tight and snug. Before permanently affixing this part of the tube to the base, we need to measure and mark where the holes are so we can drill for clamping it down. So we just lay it over, center it up on the cylinder head, and then put a mark where each center of a hole is. We'll drill them out 7 16 the size of our ready rod. And once we get that done, then we will permanently affix that so that we can bolt it down and put vacuum to it. 
Here's the final assembled product of our vacuum chamber. It's just a couple pieces that are press fit together. We have our holes drilled, we have our piece epoxied in, and then just using some bolts, we bolt her through to the cylinder head, and that's where we apply our vacuum for when we're doing our testing. And then it plugs into the head so that when we apply vacuum with a valve open, it'll measure how much of a restriction is still left in this chamber that is not pulling through your intake valve. And it just pulls us up and tells us how much vacuum is on that port. So that as we play with this thing and we open it up, bigger camshaft, better valves, port it out, we should see less and less and less vacuum, which means less restriction. Now what you've seen there is with the vacuum on, it pulls the fluid up and we have some marks. The top mark is a stock exhaust valve. At full open, that's where the vacuum that it pulled. This mark right here is the stock intake valve at max lift with a stock camshaft where that pulled for vacuum. And then this mark here was our Schrick racing camshaft that we simulated and we you know, got a little more flow because we lost some vacuum. And especially on the intake side, we gained a little more flow because it was a bigger valve and it was actually able to utilize the lift more. And this is how we're going to figure out our porting, playing with the head, uh, some lightweight back cut valves, what we can do to this thing to make more power before we get too more further in depth with it. That about wraps us up on our rudimentary flow bench build. It's a pretty interesting project. It's not something that we dreamt up ourselves. We found this at a link online called DIY Muscle Car, which references a book where the author had built his own manometer-based flow bench with essentially plumbing products and some tubing. So we decided to try it for ourselves since flow benches are expensive and we don't have enough money or the time to send this off for professional work, but we should be able to measure our own successes with boarding. Yep, and that's exactly why we're doing this, to see uh, what the differences valves will do because this head is going to get a different set of valves in it. We are going to port it out and it's going to get a different camshaft. This lets us measure incrementally each step that we do to see how much more flow we gain. Now with these numbers, these will not work against any other known numbers published out there. It is only to compare against our own numbers because our shop vac creates a different amount of vacuum than someone else's, different port size, everything changes. It only lets us compare against ourselves but we can compare any other cylinder head to this head. And later on, we will do a comparison of a Fiat twin cam head versus this in stock form and see how that flows as well. Certainly, the main thing that we'll do is we'll establish some baseline flow numbers and then we'll be able to gauge percentage of flow increase or decrease yep. across our changes with valves, cams, and porting. And we can actually see if maybe highfalutin uh, valves, maybe they make no difference. We won't know until we try or maybe porting uh, certain parts of the head make no difference. It's gonna give us some numbers to compare to other stuff from previous projects that we already knew, and it'll give you guys some information. Absolutely, like we simulated uh, one of the online available cams just through, through shimming the valve open with feeler gauges to simulate the additional lift offered by those camshafts, and we found that the flow increased. Yeah, like we got 5% increase in flow on a stock head with a stock valve just by putting a bigger camshaft in, which would equate to more power. Absolutely, and that just adjusted the peak number. We haven't talked about any of the other cam events or any other transitional flow points. This was just proof of concept to build it and see if it would work. And we were really surprised how nicely it works. Yeah. It's actually very readable. It's slow to move. There's no big jumps. It'll be nice. Yeah, so stay tuned for more stuff on that in the future. We'll really break this down, publish our results and our findings, as well as going forward with the full porting of this cylinder head, as well as we build up some parts to put all this on the Ivan 2104 1.5 liter engine. Yeah. And this head build will make sense later on as a release kind of more of what we're doing. Absolutely. But until then, stay tuned. Be sure to check us out online at gtconcepts.ca where we publish articles and we'll publish a tech backgrounder on this video as well as well as Facebook, and as always, YouTube, where you're watching us now. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Later.